You know, for the first time in three generations, we're coming to the taxpayers and say, yeah, we, we really do need a firehouse. And need is not, is, is, is not a superlative here. We do, and we'd be very grateful for their support on March 18th. Please come out on March 18th, noon to 9. It's, it's, this is important to keep your volunteers going, to keep the, the firehouse going, the firefighters going. This is an important project. Not only on my family, but all these brothers of mine really depend on the public now more than ever. I'm Harold Spezio. I'm presently captain with the Cambridge Fire Department, serving 17 years as fire chief. So please come out and help us make our job safe so we can help you. My name is Nash Alexander. I'm the deputy chief with the Cambridge Fire Department. I've been in the fire service for 25 years, 20 years with the Cambridge Fire Department. My name is Tom Gray and I've been a member for 24 plus years as a firefighter. Currently, I am the fire chief of the Cambridge Fire Department. I'm Melissa Spezio. I have been a member of the department since 1993. Well, my name is Tim Cavanaugh, and uh, I first joined the Volunteer Fire Service back in uh, 1977. Alex Bell, been on the fire department for just about four years now. My name is Lance Weiser. I've been in the department for 10 years. Well, my name is Kyle Drummond. I've been a member for about four months, six months. I want to be a firefighter because it's a huge honor nationwide. Um, it's a brotherhood. I joined the Cambridge Fire Department to give back to my area, to the town, and to the area of Washington County. When I was six years old, I lived on Main Street uh, by Allen's Hair Salon. And the day after Christmas, our house burnt down. Uh, two, three o'clock in the morning, we lost everything. Very lucky to get out. Ever since then, uh, all I really wanted to be is a firefighter. My father joined. He was probably on for 12 to 15 years, and my grandfather was on before him. So I kind of wanted to follow in their footsteps, and I joined. I was raised to help my community members in any way I could. I started as a, a young kid with my grandparents uh, visiting the Shushan Firehouse. I remember pretty fondly that I was helping them uh, work through carnivals, helping them with fundraisers, and just spending a lot of time around uh, the Shushan Fire Department. It was really a, a family thing. As I grew older, it's one of the things that I kind of craved for, is to be part of the fire service community, part of the volunteering community, and to be able to give back. I mean, these communities that we live in are, are such great places that anytime you have the opportunity to, uh, to get back to it is, is truly something special. So I rejoined the department here uh, about six, nine months ago. I'm no substitute for the 22-year-old I used to be or the young guys that we have in the departments, but there's, there's enough to do. There's apparatus to be run, pumps to be run. When these guys come out of the building exhausted, refresh them, change air packs, and we need volunteers. That's an opportunity for, for, for other older people. I mean, I'm, there's nothing special about me. I'm just as decrepit as the next one, but we, we need to keep volunteerism in our small towns because the, we really don't have an alternative. We don't have the tax base to have a full-time paid department, and we're just stretched out geographically way too thin to have paid departments cover counties like Washington or northern Saratoga or Warren County. So 
Volunteerism has always been the answer, and I think it's got to continue to be the answer. Uh, not everybody's got to be able to run up a ladder and carry a 200-pound person down out of a burning building. There's, there's other things that need to be done. Uh, I think it's a, uh, it's a great way to help the community for somebody looking to join. Uh, there's a lot of gratitude when, when you see that you've, you know, on somebody's worst day that you've, you know, done all you can and helped them, and they come over and they say thank you. Uh, there's a lot of gratitude um, in that. We have a younger generation. We need to teach how to be outstanding community members. You know, I'm really pleased with the support within this department. You know, if I have anything, if I have any problems, I can just call any of these guys and talk to them, which is nice. So uh, to be able to turn a passion like volunteering into a career that I absolutely love and adore uh, has truly been something special for me and my family. As more and more mandates have been put on us from Albany, Washington, and the NFPA, I've watched an increasing degree of professionalism. I'm very impressed just coming back after my 12-year hiatus out of the department to see the level of training, the level of qualification, certifications, and professionalism that these guys do, and that's all on their time and their dime. They're, they're the ones spending their weekends, their weeknights, incredible amounts of, of time and dedication uh, that, that, that my fellow members put in. On one hand, it's needed. It's the new mandates that are coming out, uh, but conversely, it's just the level of professionalism that the fire service nationally is now demanding out of volunteer departments uh, as well as, as, as the paid professional ones uh, in, in the cities. And I, I think we can put our training and our, our response and professionalism up against any paid department that uh, I've ever seen in action. When people think fire department, they think of somebody's house on fire. And a good portion of our calls are actually, uh, we run car accidents, car fires, we run a lot of storm, storm related calls. Two years ago in May, we ran 40, 50 calls here in the village in about a six hour span when the bad windstorm came through. Uh, power lines, trees on houses, all sorts of stuff, flooded basements. I even see the calls once in a blue moon for a cat in a tree. And we help our neighboring fire departments, uh, whether it be Shushan, Salem, Buskirk, down into Hoosick Falls, Greenwich, East and Middle Falls. We've even at times sent firefighters to areas in other parts of the state. After, uh, after the hurricanes, we sent firefighters. So we see a lot of stuff and, and the fire services, you know, they always say a brotherhood where we help each other, regardless if it's the Cambridge Fire Department or we help other fire departments that maybe we never heard of and don't know anybody on. So if you were to walk around our station, you would see that we're jammed right in a, a small building and we don't have a lot of extra space. So from when I joined, we've we've had a lot of modifications. The room that we're actually making this video in used to be a meeting room at one time, even a courtroom. Um, now it's our gear room. We have no meeting room here. We have to go to the village office to, to have meetings and classroom training. We once had a kitchen. I can remember as a child being in that kitchen with Pam McCauley and Jerry Birch and my mom making sandwiches and you know, to bring to fire calls, and now the kitchen has a fire truck in it. Our parking situation has changed. Um, the business next door is now a residence. Um, the main street in front of the firehouse uh, now holds cars from apartment buildings. So we have storage down on 22 that we store places, and we use the village offices and we use the firehouse, every crack and crevice of the firehouse. So the present building was built in 1951. The building was added on throughout the 70s and 80s to accommodate the five pieces of apparatus we have now. In 51, when it was built, it, the apparatus was approximately 20 feet in length, and this building was um, plenty big for the, the smaller pieces of apparatus. Through the years, the apparatus has grown with mandates put on the department about firefighter safety, um, equipment that needed to be carried, um, along with um, firefighters riding the apparatus having to be seat belted. The average fire truck in today's world averages around 32 feet long. In this station, we have to build our apparatus somewhere around 29, 29 and a half feet long is the maximum length of a truck that we can put into this firehouse. If you walk around the outside of the building, um, the front two corners are undermined and deteriorating. You can see the building is falling apart. We have no parking lot, no 
off street parking so we just park wherever we can sometimes it's, it's dangerous conditions just to get to the firehouse where firefighters have to come quite a little ways from where they park to the fire station and it could be icy and I kind of climb over snow banks and stuff like that uh, one of our emergency doors is no longer able to be used due that the building has shifted. The door won't open or close, so we've actually lost one door. Um, I'm worried that someday we could come here for an alarm and not be able to open the, the actual bay doors to get the apparatus out for somebody's emergency when they really need us to, uh, to be responding. It will allow us to operate out of one building, operate more efficiently, safely. It will give us some pride back our, our building is literally falling in the front corners are falling in and it will give us the opportunity to focus our time on training we need a building also with a bigger house you can have better response times with getting trucks out instead of having to move trucks around to get certain trucks out repairs um, expensive repairs are going to be needed um, to stay if necessary for the department. In today's world and the cancer rates of firefighters soaring, carcinogens coming back from fire scenes on turnout gear and equipment has to be decontaminated at the station to help protect our firefighters from becoming ill with cancer from responding to emergencies that they volunteer for. We have to add certain areas to help decontaminate our gear, our equipment, separate from the area of where we train. This adds space and it adds cost to the building, but it's essential to the functionality of the fire department and keeping our volunteers safe. Our firehouse now has a lot of issues. Um, you know, the water doesn't go to the drain, sits on the floor, um, it's really tight to get in between the trucks. Um, the dressing room is you're right on top of each other trying to get ready and uh, you know it just be it would be great to to have a new firehouse that had the room and 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 the place to to pull a truck out and wash it and uh, not have to worry about cars a foot off the front of the truck and hopefully we get it when I first joined the department in 1990 we didn't fit in this firehouse we were crammed in. This was the meeting room. The village board also used it for, for its activities. It was the courtroom. Uh, we had gear hanging out in the bay on every, you know, if something stuck out in the corner, it had gear hung on it. Um, the apparatus, of course, that we had back then was much smaller and much lighter as these mandates have increased for what we have to have on our equipment and stuff. The apparatus has gotten much bigger and much heavier to the point now where it, we didn't fit 30 years ago. We sure don't fit now. So I think we've we've gotten every penny's worth out of this this building, and and I, I hope that the uh, the taxpayers look at that and look at the fact that the volunteers ourselves and of the five departments I've been in, this is the only department I've ever been associated with, where volunteers actually go out and do fundraisers, do barbecues, do carnivals, take the money and buy apparatus, bunker pants, turnout gear, things that really are the responsibility of the government and the taxpayers that own the department. These guys over the last decade have spent over $500,000 of their own money that we've raised as, as a fire company, as volunteers, to put it into fire apparatus, equipment and stuff. So for us to come to the community and say look we've done as much as we can do we've bought the land we've paid uh, CT mail the consultants to do all the, the the figuring and make sure that our what we have is what we need and the figures that we're coming to the taxpayers with are as accurate as we can possibly make them as volunteers we've raised our money we've bought three and a half trucks out of the five trucks we've bought turnout Gary bought extrication tools and it's really not everybody can be a firefighter. Not everybody can get on a truck, but there's ways to support our community. And this is a very important way to me to support the community. And I'm hoping that um, more and more of our community members realize the importance of a volunteer, 100% volunteer fire department. There's a beautiful field over on 313 that the firemen bought in 2003 for $35,000. I don't think you could ask for a nicer, humbler building to put there. It's not going to be elaborate. 
it's going to serve our needs. So the Cambridge Fire Department consists of a volunteer membership of about 20, 26 members at this point. All volunteer, 100% volunteer. The membership makes up a not-for-profit as a membership for that we can do fundraising to assist the village and the community in the um, funding of the fire department. We don't have a plan B. We need a new firehouse. We will continue to volunteer. We will continue to be there whenever and wherever you need us. But at this point, to keep our certification and to keep our guys safe, we really do need a firehouse. It's, it's, this is important. To keep your volunteers going, to keep the, the firehouse going, the firefighters going, this is an important project. Not only my family, but all these brothers of mine really depend on the public more, now more than ever. Seeing the plan of what we want, um, it's a pretty big deal. You know, here we're, we're crammed, and um, we need this badge. The building project, it's definitely a big deal. I mean, we definitely need one. The history of this one, and the structural issues, it's only a matter of time before this one ends up falling in. We took our 15,000 square feet needs assessment and reevaluated it knowing that the price of per square foot for a 15,000 square foot building was going to be too much of an impact on the village taxpayers. In 2000, around 2013, 2014, we came up with a smaller design of a, just under 12,000 square feet. The village through the years had looked at acquiring grants from the federal government, state government to help accommodate the cost of the building. In 2017, the board and the fire department sat down again and said, we need to come up with what we need for a building. In 2017, we looked at our assessment, needs assessment again, knowing that the price per square foot of a building in, in 2017 had gone up drastically from 2013. Our needs assessment shrunk once again to 10,000 square feet. The fire station has to be built to essential services standards. The building being built to the specifications is to withstand any weather situation or natural disaster. So as the building committee chairperson, I ask that you look at the bond, you look at the, the vote, and take the volunteers of our community and help us provide them with the proper facility to make their job safe for helping their community. 29 years ago, I joined the fire department to help others. For 29 years, I have sacrificed family time and personal time to help others. Any member of this fire department want to have it any other way. We do what we do because we love to help others. So please come out and help us make our job safe so we can help you.